红酒世界越懂越喜欢，欢迎大家收看本期的红酒世界名庄直播。很高兴再一次跟大家见面，我是红酒世界的高级编辑拉头。那积木桶酒庄之后呢，我们又非常荣幸地邀请到了波尔多五大一级庄之一的另一座酒庄马哥酒庄来到我们红酒世界的直播间。坐在我身旁的呢，就是马哥酒庄的总经理菲利普巴斯卡雷斯先生。啊，马哥酒庄呢，它的葡萄酒的酿造历史已经有数百年的时间了。酒庄的葡萄酒的表现呢，优异而稳定，尤其是近几个年份啊，更是大放异彩，值得我们去了解和探索。今天呢，我们就跟着巴斯卡雷斯先生来听一听马哥酒庄的故事。首先呢，我们请巴斯卡雷斯先生自我介绍一下。Nice to meet you, Mr. b a s c a l a e s Would you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yes. So good afternoon. My name is、uh, Philippe Bascol, and、uh, so I am managing director of Chateau Margaux now. And uh, <coughs> I uh, worked for Chateau Margaux during 20 years, between、uh, 1990 and until 1911, and as a estate manager and assistant to Paul Pontalier. And then I left uh, for uh, almost six years in Napa Valley until、uh, March 2017. And so now, for the last、uh, seven months. I am、uh, again with Chateau Margaux as the managing director. We know that Chateau Margaux is an estate with a long history.、Uh, when was the estate established, and、uh, when did wine making start as the estate? Yeah, it's a very long story. Of course, we know that Chateau Margaux existed in the 13th century, and probably they made wine. Of course, because in France at that time, everybody made wines everywhere. So for sure, they made wine. But、uh, probably they discovered、uh, a little bit later that、uh, some、uh, areas, some places, were great to、uh, to grow vines and to make、uh, better wines. And so、uh, some people decided, at the end of the 16th century, to、uh, to buy some blocks of vines and to create one big entity. And、uh, for Chateau Margaux, so it was at the end of the 16th century. And so we can say that Chateau Margaux started to make、uh, a wine. Uh, that uh, became to be famous,、uh, yes, more than four centuries ago,、mm -hmm. and、uh, and then of course、uh, the the wine became more and more famous,、uh, recognized by Thomas Jefferson, for example,、uh, in America, and、uh, then in the classification 1855, of course, as a, a first growth, and、uh, yeah, and it was more and more successful. Okay, thank you. Well, in 1855, when Chateau Margaux was、uh, rated the first growth chateau、uh, in Bordeaux,、uh, it is said it's the only winery that received two,、uh, 20 points, the full full points.、Uh, yes. What? Why do you think Chateau Margaux can win this such honor? Yeah, of of course.、Um, yeah, it's not only. I would say that.、Uh, It's not by chance, of course. It's uh, uh, Chateau Margaux for sure deserves to be a first growth, and uh, and to 20 points on yeah out of 20, it was based, you know, about the price, about、uh, the fame, about I don't know exactly, you know, what decided this score.、Uh, I think I think that the score is just a number. I think the most important is、uh, is also the、uh, the fame of the wine, the quality of the wine, the consistency of the wine. And、uh, of course, we are very pleased to be、uh, a first growth, and、uh, and and for a long time. I, I mean, that it's、uh, a sign that the quality of the wine is from the soil, from the place. Whatever, whatever the winemaker, whatever the owner, you know, this place is really uh, uh, extraordinary to be able to produce、uh, for centuries such a, such a great wine. Well,、uh, people in Medoc was astonished when. When Andrew Menzelopoulos bought the estate, so how was the situation at that time? Yeah, in the 70s, you know, the Medoc and the production of wine was not as successful as today, and so、uh, the estates had uh, many uh, wine in、uh, in stores, and、uh, it was very difficult to sell some、uh, some crops, some 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 bottles of wine, and, and so.、Uh, Uh, when Andre Menzelopoulos decided to buy Chateau Margaux, it was a big surprise, 
and um, and then it immediately it changed many many things, and uh, and then in the 80s, just a few years later, <coughs> the wine was very successful, and uh, and Chateau Margaux 78, so the first vintage made uh, by uh, <coughs> Andre Menzelopoulos was very uh, famous and uh, and considered as uh, uh, the wine of the vintage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, uh, we know that uh, in 1980, unfortunately, Mr. Ambra passed away and yes. his daughter, <coughs> Corinne, uh, took the charge. So uh, what contribution has um, Corinne made to Chateau Marco? Of course, she continued in the same way as her father decided to go. And uh, I would say that it's uh, first to, uh, to have a clear vision of uh, uh, what Chateau Margaux should be, which level of quality. So it's a research of excellence, mainly. And of course, she continued to, uh, to tell all the team, I want to make the best wine possible. Uh, and this is the most important. You know, when you want to make an uh, excellent wine, you need the support, of course, of the owner. Uh, and, uh, um, and, and then, uh, I think it was also at that time that especially in the estates like Chateau Margaux, we started to work with some uh, searcher in university and that the, the science of enology uh, came into the, the, uh, the production estates, you know, the, the, like Chateau Margaux. So I think Chateau Margaux was one of the first to work with Emile Penot, uh, that was a famous uh, uh, professor of enology in Bordeaux, and uh, he became consultant for Chateau Margaux. And uh, this also, of course, uh, allowed Chateau Margaux to uh, improve all the techniques and at the end to improve the quality of the wine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Chateau Margaux is nicknamed the Versailles of mm -hmm. Medoc. So uh, could you please uh, introduce the, uh, the spectacular main building for us? Yeah, it's the, uh, the chateau is really spectacular. It was uh, built in uh, 1815, from 1810 to uh, 1815, and the architect was uh, Louis Combe, and uh, so he made uh, a chateau, of course based on what the owner uh, wanted at that time, but it's uh, what we call the style is neo-Palladian, uh, very classic with an inspiration of uh, uh, Greece, and uh, as well Napoleon, because it was just uh, uh, at the end of, uh, of the life of, uh, of Napoleon, of the, the age of Napoleon, and so uh, you, you have many also details coming from uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, 200 years later, in 2015, uh, we know that uh, Chateau Margaux had a modern building uh, to, the, uh, to in tribute to the great history of Chateau Margaux. So what is the function and uh, the appearance of this new building? Yeah, this, we, we needed, you know, a few years ago, we needed to, uh, to, to, uh, to have a larger cellar and to, uh, to increase the number of tanks. And uh, so uh, Corinne Menzelopoulos decided to work with Norman Foster to, uh, to, to build a, a new cellar that uh, could, could go uh, go very well with, with the old building, you know, because all the cellars were built in 1815. Mm -hmm. And so it was very challenging to add a new building mm -hmm. that can be close to the old one, but, uh, yeah, in a, with harmony. And uh, so Norman Foster did uh, this uh, building, and it was finished in uh, 2015. And so inside you can find so some uh, fermentation tanks, and uh, s small size, and also the cellar where we keep the barrels of uh, Pavillon Blanc. Mm -hmm. And as well, uh, the R&D uh, department, where we do some experimentations to uh, always improve the wines. Mm -hmm. Thank you. People always say that a great wine starts from a great vineyard. So uh, how is the terroir of uh, the vineyard of Chateau Margaux? Chateau Margaux is made with gravels, uh, brought by the river uh, a long time ago, and so as I, I would, yeah, it's also uh, we, we have because we are very close to the river, so so we have some uh, a very small slope, and so we have also 
some uh, some salts with some uh, limestone limestone and some uh, clay and uh, but mainly they are gravels mm -hmm. but what it's important to uh, for us to have also a diversity of different soils because depending on uh, on the vintage and the weather conditions uh, some blocks can be more or less successful depending on the vintage and so it's very important to uh, to play with all these blocks and to make uh, to make the best blend possible well um are there any differences between the terroir of the Margo Appalachian and the other uh, left bank Appalachians, like Poyak and Saint Yeah, the, I would say the first difference is that Margo, Margo is uh, on the south, in the south of the Medoc. So uh, probably the temperature is a little bit uh, higher in, uh, in the Appalachian Margo, and so the grapes can ripe a little bit more easily. And uh, it can explain that the, the wines of the Appalachian Margot usually are a little bit softer and the tannins are more integrated. So it can be an advantage for, for Margot. Then uh, Margot is also very diverse compared to some other, uh, some other Appalachians. And uh, because we have um, yeah, different types of gravels. And uh, as I told you, we have also some limestone and, and clay blocks. So it's... Uh, Probably it's more uh, diverse than the other ones as well. Yeah. Mm, okay. Some chateaus in Bordeaux uh, use the biodynamic approach in mm -hmm. viticulture. So, uh, how do you think of biodynamics and uh, uh, what uh, kind of approaches uh, Chateau Marco using? Yeah, we are of course interested in uh, biodynamic because many people today want to produce with uh, using this. Uh, strategy and so uh, and so we do uh, some experimentations uh, comparing the organic system and the biodynamic system with conventional as well and um, and so we try to understand you know what is positive what could be uh, uh, good for us in biodynamic at the same time we really want to imp to use our brain we really want to understand what we are doing and so it's very it's uh, very important to, uh, to make experiment and to try to understand the system rather than just to apply it, believing in it. But uh, I strongly believe that, uh, that the improvement we can make is based on the knowledge, not mm. on the beliefs. Mm. Uh, how are the grapes harvested in Chateau Margot and how do you uh, decide t uh, the right time to pick the grapes? So we taste, we taste the grapes uh, every two days and just to see the evolution of each, uh, uh, each grape in each block and uh, so of course we check the quality of the flavors and we check uh, the quality of the skins and uh, of course we analyze as well just to have uh, an, uh, an idea of uh, the sugar and the acidity and so if we see that the grapes are uh, improving so we decide to wait and then when we decide, we see that the improvement uh, stops, so we decide to pick. And uh, we pick in uh, very small, uh, small boxes. Of course, it's made by, uh, by hand. Mm -hmm. Some chateaus in Bordeaux use high percentage of new oak to age their wines, uh, while some others, like uh, Ponte Canet, they are trying to uh, reduce the proportion of new oak. So how is the situation for your first wine, Chateau Margot? So the, the first wine, Chateau Margot, is aged in New York, 100% New York. We can change that depending on the vintage, so because it's very important to adjust the quantity of New York with the quality of the wine. But so today and for, I think the last time, last vintage, we didn't put 100% of New York, probably was 92. T today, you know, first because we, I think we have improved the quality uh, of the grapes, and, um, so, so, and then we have also limited the selection a lot. So, so Chateau Margot today is a very small part of the production. So uh, in this case, the quality uh, deserves, I would say, almost every vintage, 100% of New York. And if you taste Chateau Margot, you don't feel the taste of the York at all. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you said that it's, uh, it's a very small proportion of the uh, the, the crop, yeah, yeah, the crop uh, about uh, 
how many so today we Chateau Margaux is made with between 30 and 35 percent of the crop and wow. uh, if we see the, the, uh, the proportion of Chateau Margaux 30 years ago it was 60 percent mm -hmm. if I ask you to use three words to describe the style of the first wine uh, which yes. words will you choose uh, yeah for first for the nose I would say complex so it's when you have all the flavors at the same level of intensity so it's really like a perfume mm -hmm. you, you don't know what you smell you know it's uh, uh, and, and so you like to, to to smell and smell again all the time you know like a great perfume and then on, on the palate I would say uh, I would say two words that many times are uh, contradictory and very difficult to, to put together in the same wine it's uh, density, means uh, strength, power, uh, and uh, I would say silkiness. Silkiness. So, so means that uh, uh, the wine is very powerful, but with a lot of charm, with a lot of softness. So it's, uh, it's, it's really unique for Chateau Margaux to, to reach this level of elegance. Mm -hmm. What are the differences between the second wine, Pavillon Rouge, and uh, the first wine? The difference are given by the fact that when we have, uh, when we make the, the blend, so we have uh, around 90 different wines, and so we start deciding uh, the blend of Chateau Margaux. So of course we take the best lots to make the blend of Chateau Margaux. And then once Chateau Margaux is decided, uh, and, uh, and of course this selection is very small, then we take uh, the best lots left to, to to make uh, and build the, the blend of Pavillon Rouge. So of course we have the, exactly the same criteria to select the lots for Pavillon Rouge as for Chateau Margaux. So in Chateau Margaux, you, uh, um, in uh, Pavillon Rouge, sorry, in Pavillon Rouge, you have exactly the same qualities as in Chateau Margaux, but just at a level a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So, but you have as well uh, the complexity and uh, the silkiness and the length of the aromas, but just uh, with, with uh, the intensity a little bit lower than in, uh, in Chateau Marco, and as well in edgeability a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can also say that we can drink this wine earlier? Yes, depending on the vintage. The vintage is more uh, important than uh, if it is the first or the second wine. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually, yes, I would say that Pavillon Rouge is open and uh, approachable sooner than uh, uh, mm -hmm. Early years and the Chateau Margaux itself, mm -hmm. yes. Well, uh, after the amazing 2014 Pavillon Blanc, uh, mm -hmm. it is said that Chateau Margaux was uh, trying to introduce a Chateau Margaux Blanc corresponding to the first growth red. So, how is this plan going? Uh, of course, it's very tempting, you know, because we consider Pavillon Blanc today at the same level of quality as Chateau Margaux first wine. So uh, it, uh, it makes make sense that uh, we could create a Chateau Margaux Blanc. At the same time, um, you know, with a system of uh, appellation in France and, uh, and as uh, a very, it doesn't exist an appellation white wine in the Medoc. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it's, so we, we have to um, to see how we can do that. So at the moment, we, we are still thinking of it, uh, and so we'll see in the future. Mm -hmm. Several vintages of the first wine, Chateau Margaux, was rated uh, 100 points by the um, critics. Uh, uh, so uh, could you please introduce some of the 100 point vintages to us? Um. Yeah, I can talk about some great vintages, of course. I, I, uh, I'm not sure that they got 100 points. I'm sorry about that. We, we, you know, it's not so for us, okay. it's not so important. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but of course, I, uh, I am sure that vintages like uh, 1990, 1996, or uh, maybe 2000, you know, we have, yeah, great... Uh, many great vintages, you know, and with different styles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so 1990, for example, and 96 are very soft, very enjoyable 
uh, very uh, soft tannins. And then we have great vintages like uh, 2005 uh, that are very, very concentrated and strong. So I encourage people just to taste many vintages and just to decide which ones are the best for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we like diversity as well between vintages and to, uh, to make different wines mm -hmm. each time. Okay. 2015 and 2016 are also two remarkable vintages mm -hmm. for Chateau Margaux. Uh, could you please compare these two vintages? Uh, it's always very difficult, you know, to, uh, to compare vintages and, and wines when they are so young. You know, it's like comparing a baby of uh, one year old and two years old. You know, it's, uh, they are so different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they get older, of course, it's uh, easier to compare people between uh, 30 and 31 or mm -hmm. uh, 40 and 41. But uh, yeah, they are so young. But uh, uh, of course, the 15, uh, in 15, we made uh, the Chateau Margaux a little bit more opulent. Uh, and uh, in 16, it was fresher. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, 16 has a wonderful perfume, uh, very fresh. Still, the tannin is very uh, elegant, but, uh, but on, on the, the freshness style. And uh, 15 is more on the, uh, it's a more impressive, I would say, more impressive wine and uh, with a uh, bigger opulence. Mm -hmm. We can see that the 2015 vintage is bottled with a yes. special label. So yes. why is this label design and uh, um, uh, what's the meaning of this label? Yeah, the first is uh, because we wanted to pay a, a tribute to, uh, um, to the building made in uh, 1815. Uh, of course, it was 200 years later and, and so uh, and Paul Pontalier decided to make a specific bottle. But uh, he, he said as well, okay, we will do it only if the vintage is great, only if the wine um, is uh, um, good enough to, to have a specific bottle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was okay. So we were lucky that 15 is a great vintage. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unfortunately, so he passed away. Mm -hmm. And then Corinne Menzelopoulos so decided to add uh, uh, also uh, an homage to Paul Pontalier on the, on the bottom. So, but you can see, of course, the new cellar of Norman, Norman Foster and, and the chateau uh, uh, built in 1815 in the middle. How do you comment on the uh, contribution of the former uh, general manager, Mr. Pontalier? Uh, yeah. yeah I, you know, I worked during uh, more than 20 years with him. I would say that uh, uh, first, uh, he was doubting all the time. Uh, I think it's very important in a place like Chateau Margaux to, you know, when you decide something, to, to be sure. Because, uh, and so when we change something, we, we need to be sure that this is an improvement. And uh, so he was always uh, questioning, you know, the reasons why we should change or not. So uh, this was uh, uh, very, very important for uh, for even my education, I would say. And uh, the second is, uh, was very, very hum humble at the same time. You know, that he considered that the wine was made by Chateau Margaux itself, by the vineyard. And, and then we were, as a winemaker, we were just to, uh, to help the nature to make the wine, to control a little bit, because sometimes the nature is not so generous. But, uh, but many times in great vintages, we have nothing to do. So it's a very, uh, we have to, to adopt uh, an attitude very humble, just to accept that the nature can make uh, great things and the nature doesn't need uh, ourselves to do that. Mm -hmm. After you have taken over the job, uh, what plans do you have to develop the chateau? You know, there, there is nothing uh, really uh, revolutionary, it's just uh, uh, about just continuing to improve, to, uh, to have more precision uh, how we manage the vineyard. For example, we will probably have more tanks, more small tanks, just always to be able to separate the different blocks more precisely. And so then to be able to select, after the se to have separated the lots, we can select the best for Chateau Margaux and for Pavillon Rouge. So, uh, but, and then of continuing to experiment, to compare different tools, to, uh, to, to use different uh, methods, yeast, you know, many things we have to, uh, to check 
and to experiment. And it's, of course, it's uh, never finished. Mm -hmm. So, but nothing, uh, you know, we have at the same time to go very slowly, just mm -hmm. again to be sure that we go in the mm -hmm. right direction. Mm -hmm. Among all the vintages of the first wine, Chateau Margaux, you have tasted, uh, which vintage is the most impressive for you? Um, yeah, I remember, of course, many vintages. It's difficult to choose just one. Um, it's, uh, and because it, it depends as well on the condition, you know, and of course I remember better the, uh, uh, the emotion I have uh, felt than just uh, an impressive wine. And so I, I would say to choose just one, I, I would say uh, nine, Chateau Margot 1900. 1900. That, uh, of, 1900, yes. That, uh, of course, was, uh, is, a great, is a great wine and so old. So, of course, it's very emotional to, uh, to taste uh, such a wine. But, uh, you know, many other wines, other vintages, I, I, I can uh, say uh, 29 or 61, 59. You know, you, you have many, many many, many of them. Mm -hmm. The next question is, um, what food is perfect with Chateau Margaux? And uh, uh, do you know any Chinese food that matches well with the wine? You know, I think first that when the wine is good and, and great, you, you can eat what you, what you want, you know, what you like. It's, uh, of course, I, I would, because I think it's uh, really a question of uh, education. So I, I don't, you know, we make wine, of course, to please people. So I am very happy when people enjoy to drink Chateau Margaux, of course. But uh, their education can be very different than mine. Uh, and so many times I think it's a pity that I can, uh, uh, I tell them how to drink Chateau Margaux. I think you can just uh, taste Chateau Margaux and decide what you want to eat. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend just uh, to maybe to, uh, to avoid uh, some very, very spicy food mm -hmm. uh, because we, when it's too strong, then the wine will disappear. So I think it's, uh, uh, it can be a problem. And then when it's too acidic, like a vinegar, you know, and in this case as well, I think Chateau Margot is not made for extreme food, I would say, mm -hmm. just to avoid very strong uh, flavors. But uh, if it's uh, in the middle, you can eat what you, what you want. Mm -hmm. How is the aging potential of Chateau Margaux and uh, after how many years of bottle age uh, can we open this wine? Again, it's a very subjective question and, and so um, it depends on the taste and the, the education. So, um, of course, we know that Chateau Margaux can age beautifully for um, years and years, yet I tasted in 1900, so it shows that uh, even a wine uh, one century old can, can show uh, power and, uh, and complexity. So, uh, of course, depending on the vintage as well. But it's really about uh, the taste of, uh, of people. You, you may like a lot the, uh, the, the power, the intensity of the flavors, the fruit, the use of the wine, even if it's a little bit uh, uh, tannic, or you can prefer the, uh, the softness and the delicacy, and then you will wait much longer. For f my personal opinion is that at least I would wait uh, 10 years to taste the Chateau Margaux, whatever the vintage. And depending uh, on the vintage, you, it can be 20, 30 years. Then after this time, the wine can stay at the same level of quality during many, many years. Mm -hmm. So you have time. So the best way is just to, uh, to taste one bottle of Chateau Margaux, you know, every uh, two, three years because it's very interesting to see the evolution of the wine with time. And then when you like it a lot, then you drink the, the other bottles. Okay, thank you. Could you please tell us uh, how do you feel uh, for uh, this trip to wine world and uh, to China? Yeah, it's always very interesting to, uh, to come to China because uh, uh, for, for the last years, I, I think the market has changed a lot. And uh, so we meet uh, people more and more educated and with uh, uh, a better knowledge of uh, our wines and so it's uh, very important for us you know not non, not only to make uh, great wines but al as well to communicate about them and to share the uh, uh, the enthusiasm of people and and just to see how uh, how they like the wine so uh, so it, i think it's a very important time in china at the moment so mm -hmm. i really enjoy to uh, to come each time and uh, 
Mm-hmm. And I will come back for sure.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. 呃，非常感谢巴斯卡雷斯先生参加红酒世界的直播。希望日后呢，我们与马哥酒庄能有更多的交流与合作。也感谢各位观众朋友们的观看。我们下期再见。Well, uh, please say goodbye to the audience. Okay. Grand Cheers, Chaudet. You are Tom. You are Chihuan. Then bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>